Welcome to Beyond the Shoots is presented by Parasite Systems. I'm your host, Doug Simcox, and I hope that you're having a great day and staying safe. Today, my co-host, Sam, he is recorded in Perpard, New York. I am recorded in Taylorsville, Kentucky. BTC is back from the road again. Does that make sense, Sam? Back from the road again? <laughs> uh, whatever you think, Doug. Last week, we recorded in BTC Studios North, the Rawhide Ranch. And Sam, what a week we had. It was so fun. We got to see so many people. What did you think of the week? Just summing it up before we get to the PBR even. Well, it was an outstanding week, you know. We, we got to talk to a lot of people, and uh, some of us do what we do best and yak. But uh, <laughs> it, it was uh, it was very interesting, you know. Found out some information I didn't know about, and it, it was just good times with good friends. Absolutely, and don't don't forget the good food. Your sister Pearl, she brought us barbecue beef. She brought us cheesy potatoes and beans and hamburgers. She brought us sausage and, and noodles. She brought us, there's one other thing. Oh, the big pasta dish. More food. You still have food. Are you still eating those leftovers, Sam? Yeah, I haven't even attempted to start on them yet. Uh, I opened the fridge and there was more there than I, I could handle. So yeah. I just... Uh, well, we'll get at it later. <laughs> you were overwhelmed when you look at all yes. the food that you have. And well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And don't forget those yeah. nice chocolate chip cookies that uh, we had also. So, Oh, those cookies Laura made were wonderful. Thank, <laughs> thank her for that, for making yeah. my waistline bigger. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Today we're going to catch up, Sam and I. We're going to talk about the Johnstown. You notice I said that right this time. time Johnstown, <laughs> Pennsylvania PBR event. And we will be reviewing our Pro Fantasy Rodeo Team BTC podcast, that 2023 NFR game standings. So before we get started, Sam, as I always do, how's Dalen? How's he doing? Uh, Dalen seems good. Uh, just, he's in Las Vegas right now. Oh. Uh, I had to call Mark Richmond and get the scoop, or he called me to give me the scoop, but, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. he's out there. They have, uh, a team's bull riding, uh, today and tomorrow. Oh, okay. And it, uh, it's where the, the owners of I think probably three bulls. They bring their three bulls, and they bring their own contestants to ride them, oh, and okay. try to get the most points they can for their team. Oh, so Dalen's on somebody's team. His bull is Mason Taylor's. Mason Taylor's so, bull. So, yep. Okay. So maybe Mason recruited Dalen to come ride his bulls. I, I, I wish I was out there. I wish I had known about this. He. I know he was going to Las Vegas for the UTV on Wednesday, but right, right. if he'd have told me about this, I might have just jumped on a plane and went and watched this. Well, just that would be fun. Because it's interesting. It really interests me how these team bull ridings work. And now, this is like a futurity? No. I, I think basically, but it, it, it's not. I don't think there's an age limit on the bulls. Okay. I think, and I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. it, it's like whoever – the points accumulate. Yeah. Like if there's three bulls on a team, those points accumulate, and the ones with the most points wins, I think, okay. on the three bulls. Okay. So he's out there the week then. I mean, at least through Wednesday or Thursday morning, something like that, right? That's just a one-day PBR out there? Yes, it's a Wednesday PBR uh -huh. with, uh, I guess, Kid Rock is going to sing, oh, and they're yeah. going to do a PBR with it. It, and Mark said something about that being a, a setup where they're picking teams to go to Arlington oh. with the Kid Rock theme there. So oh. I really didn't understand the whole concept, what they're doing. Yeah. So there again, I wish I'd have went out to see. Well, well, and you know, as I sit here, you know, for our listeners, we recorded with Dalen on Saturday. And there's so much to cover when you sit down with him. So much great information going on. And we didn't even, I didn't even think to ask about this or say, hey, where are you going next or what are you doing? This might have come out had we done that, Sam. 
It, it may have, but we kind of, you and I discussed, we were going to go in the early years so that we, yeah. we yeah. as we went on, we'd discuss more yeah. uh, later on. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, great fun and and what a what a what a neat time interviewing Dalen. Um, again, learning new stuff. Um, he's on such a schedule on these weekends that uh, we had to really be tight with our time with him. But we so appreciate him coming across, Sam, and just just a fun interview. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, was, it was different being the dad sitting across from him and asking questions and things. But yeah. I, I so enjoyed it. You, you know, bet. And so that episode it. should be coming out uh, here in a week or so. So excited about that. Just had a lot of fun. Uh, so let's, uh, we were in Johnstown, by the way, when we recorded that. We, Sam and I, uh, we left his place. We drove, we drove, what was it, about four hours down to Johnstown from Prevard, New York, uh, for a Friday night show. Yeah, four or five hour trip, nice nice little scenic drive and we got there and went and watched the bull riding absolutely and the first time and i think the first time a definitely the first time a pbr event there um but this this place blew me away sam uh the first summit arena it's also known as the war memorial arena um blew me away seats about four thousand people and it was one of the cooler PBRs I think I've ever been to. What what uh, what did you take away, Sam? Well, it was definitely a unique venue, mm -hmm. and I was so impressed when we were reading the, the people that have gone in there. Yeah, uh, just just incredible. It, oh yeah, from and like at first I was really set back thinking, okay, what's this going to be like with such a small but. The crowd sat right on the arena fence, basically. Yep. And they they were really into it. It it was a great show. Yeah. Great show. Yep. And you were up. You you and the and the boys, Tate and Seth. Uh, you guys were up on the big screen a lot, uh, dancing and doing all your moves. I thought you had a chance for the Cooper Tires fan of the day. Okay. Now let's get this straight. What? I was blessed to have Katie, Sean, Tate, and Seth come down there to it. Yes. And they were up dancing. Oh. Not me. You weren't. No. Oh, um, well, we should be able to find People would be heading for the doors if is, they seen Is that right? Dance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and kind of a kind of an old home week. We saw people, Sam, that I haven't seen for a long time. Wade and uh Renee Hazlett, right? They yep. they they <laughs> sat with us on Saturday night. Correct. Yep. From North Washington, Pennsylvania rodeo. Yeah. Part of the rodeo there. Wade fought bulls for me for years. Uh, Renee's timed on and off, and the kids have grown so much. It's like, <laughs> oh, my goodness, I miss those days. <laughs> and it sounds like we're going to see them all at the IFR here in a few weeks. He's going to, Wade's going to go down and work, uh, work the arena. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, don't forget, yesterday, Sunday, before the show, we saw Tim Slater and his brother Donnie Slater. That was fun. Again, haven't seen them in a number of years. Yeah. Um, haven't seen them in a little bit. I, I've seen them a little more than a lot of people because every once in a while I'll pop in down going through North Washington or mm -hmm. something. But mm -hmm. um, And brought their sisters with them. and. Mm -hmm. That they had a good time. They got to go back and talk to Dalen a little bit after the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just good to see good friends. You bet. You bet. And I talked to him about po uh, possibly being on the show. When you know, when you talk about steer wrestling in the Northeast, you got to talk about Carn City, Pennsylvania, home of the Sliders. They mounted up so many cowboys, started so many cowboys. They had rodeos, uh, steer wrestling schools, and that sort of thing. Always big players in the sport of rodeo in the Northeast. Been, been to the IFR, won the average at the IFR, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Tim was a player up here in the Northeast. You and, bet. Uh, and always had these great steer wrestling horses. I mean, these were just like beasts, something you would see, you know, from the Roman Empire. They just always impressed <laughs> me. And and as we have talked in the past, you know, a lot of cowboys wanted to ride his horses because they were that that team was a winning team. 
Yes, they always had good horses. Always, you bet. And then, and then, speaking of winners, we saw Clinton Cessna, Pennsylvania Cowboys, um, won the world. I think in ninety six or ninety seven. Sam, the International Professional Rodeo Association bull riding champion. Yeah, I think he won it a couple of years. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not positive, but yeah, uh, yeah. it'd have been about that time frame. Yeah. And that was so strange. You know, when I'm driving down through there, I, I really <laughs> hadn't paid attention where Johnstown was. I didn't right. look it up on the map, you know, and when yeah. you pull it up on the GPS, it just tells you, you know, it's going to take you four hours and 47 minutes to get there. And uh, you don't even think much of it. Yeah, but as I'm driving down through there, I said, "Oh wow, this is next to the Cessna's house. I wonder if they'll be around." Yep. And as we're leaving, I got the, the two boys, uh, Tate and Seth, with me. And no, I had Seth with me. Yeah. And I said, "Oh, hold on a second. I got to say hello to this guy." And it was Donald Owens, one of the judges yep. for the PBR that I know. Yep. Yep. And I said, oh, excuse me, I just got to say, hi, Donald, I'll, I'll see you later. Yeah. And uh, and I stepped in the conversation. He was talking to Clinton and his wife, Susie. Yeah. I said, oh, my goodness. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I could have stayed there for hours afterwards, but the kids had school the next day, so we, <laughs> we skipped out of there. But, uh, yeah. Uh, it was so great to see Clinton and Susie. are just wonderful people. Clinton, he didn't only win the IPRA, he won the North Finals one year and made the PBR finals the same year as my bull monkey wrench made it. You bet. So, you bet. Absolutely. Multi-talented. And there's multi-talented. some possibility, he listens to our podcast, there's some possibility mm-hmm. that he may come on and uh, share his story with us, Sam. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, that'd be great. Clinton, I look, you know, I told Donald, I said, look at him. He's still in riding weight. Look at yeah. the shape he's in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Donald and I talk about us being a little bit overweight. But, uh. <laughs> and that was nice. I hadn't met Donald either, and Clinton introduced him to me. Um, retired PBR bull rider, and now, as you said, a priority official for uh, for the PBR. Yeah, Donald, he uh, he rode in the IR, IPRA for years, and okay. he rode – Pretty much everywhere he could go, you know, yeah. he wasn't yeah. particular anywhere he could make money. He went to, and which is smart. Yeah. Um, and I remember we're we're out in Lakeside, California, behind the bucking sheets, and I'm getting ready to pull Clinton, and somebody says, "Yeah, look out now! Here it comes. Get your wallets out because he's going to take all your money. He always <laughs> does, and something of that." And yeah. it was just pretty hilarious. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And before we move, and it was great. It was great to meet him. And I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, that was very, very nice. Now, before we move on, we talked about First Summit Arena, War Memorial Arena, and you said amazing all the players that have been in there. And you're right. They have a, they had a listing, Sam. You and I stood there on Sunday afternoon and read this listing. I don't know. It had to be over 200 names. And it started in the 1950s and everything from, from Johnny Cash to Kiss. Um, just, it's incredible what has gone on in this, in this great arena. And and for our folks, seats about 4,000 people. And I got to tell you, great sound. They had the big screen, so a great view. And as Sam said, I don't know, Sam, that we could get any closer to the action. There wasn't a bad seat in the house. I don't know how we'd get any closer to the action than the way we were. And you couldn't because they were sitting right on top of the fence. <laughs> they I mean, certainly the, the were. The fence was up against the boards and the seats were up against the boards on the other side. You bet. And and, uh, and one of the things, Sam, that really, really stood out for me, um, first time we really got to hear the announcers interact in a very cool way. There was no entertainer, right? No, no, no funny man, no, no, no uh, rodeo clown. Um and they just did a great job. It felt very personal. It felt like we'd been invited to a big party. You know, and I think they've been waiting to do that for a long time because they kind of enjoyed it. Oh, man, they <laughs> did. They did. It sounded great. They did great. And then we got to meet um, one, of the, one of the Carlson brothers, right, that, that um, for, our, for our listeners, the movie Slapshot, which was a Paul Newman movie, 
1977 it was released. It had the Carlson brothers in it, Jeff, Steve, and Jack. They actually played on the hockey team, the Jets, that played there. This was this movie was filmed in the War Memorial Arena right there in Johnstown. And on Sunday, um, they had the character Dave Killer Carlson, um, and that was based on uh, Jets player Dave Killer Hansen, and uh, he was there and, and spoke, and I don't know, Sam, that was one of the coolest, again, I can't say enough for this, I'm going back, if at all possible, next year. Yeah, uh, I kind of hope they come back, it was, you know, it's close to home here. Yep, you yep. Know? Yep. So that's nice. But, uh, yeah, it that building, the, the history that was in it, you know, Kiss, Alabama. Oh. Uh, it, it, Conway Twitty. Every time you looked up. <laughs> Conway yeah. Twitty, Tammy and, Wynette, Loretta Lynn. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I knew I'd been there for a rodeo at one time uh, early on. So I looked up, yeah, it was 1986, and I – when I was going down there, Katie asked me about it. And this is my daughter, Katie. And yeah, yeah. I said, well, do you remember that picture I have with you riding with me in the Grand Entry? And she said, you mean on Fisher? Which was a horse of mine named Fisher. And I said, yeah. I said, that's the place we're going. And, uh, of course, you asked me how did they do a rodeo in a building this small. And I said, back then, I didn't even think about it right I just went and did it so I did it yeah and, and I must have been in the team open if I had my horse with me yeah. so it uh yeah I really don't remember mm-hmm. much of it mm-hmm. but uh I, I remember that picture and that's where it was from that was so cool uh, absolutely and if you've got that picture Sam we ought to put that up if you'd like and we can put that up with the uh, with the episode we must have it somewhere. Okay. I'll have to check through the photo albums or something. <laughs> okay. So as promised, we are going to talk a little bit about the event. Um, the, the results, the winner for the weekend was Casio Diaz. And, and Sam, when you think about this young man, what a year he is having. Comes up through the teams after, I think it was the second game of the season in July. Uh, Kansas City Outlaws recruits him, brings him up. Has a he finishes second in the MVP race behind Jose Vitor Lemmy, and he rides three for three for two hundred and sixty seven points and wins the event. Pretty incredible the way that man's riding. Yeah, and he's having fun. You know, yeah. he's fresh out of Brazil, living a dream that he's probably dreamed his whole life, and it is fun to him. You bet. And it shows. It, uh, it certainly does. Rode a great bow in the short round, one that actually bucked Dalen off in the first round. Cy Young. And, yeah, and made a really good bull ride. And I, I don't, even, don't even remember how many points he was because the crowd was so loud. I, I, I don't remember, but uh, made a really good bull ride. Absolutely made a great bull ride. And then Cody Jesus finishes second, uh, rides three for 267 points. Six riders, Sam, rode three of the four bulls that was possible. And these, I told my daughter that this is probably the best group of bulls I've seen back in the Northeast. Hmm. Uh, Really a good set of bulls, right? They bought them. Them bulls really bought them. It was a real good set of bulls. And and speaking of some of those bulls, we had some bulls local there, Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania, which is maybe forty minutes away, if I'm not mistaken, from from Johnstown, uh, PA. You know, it, it it'd probably be more than that. It's where we stopped. Oh yeah, and uh, got gas. But uh, yeah, it, it's probably an hour and a half. But it. It is local enough that uh, the crowd was excited when one of those bulls went. You bet. They represented, too. They did a nice job. Um, and then um, 
Uh, let's talk. Uh, there were six riders that rode three bulls. I, I said that already. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Dalen. Round one, Cy Young, the bull that uh, was unridden that Casio Diaz rode in the short round. Now, Dalen had that bull, Sam, in the long round to kick off the evening. A Blake Sharp bull. Talk a little bit about that ride, if you would, please. Well, um, it looked to me... Uh, Dalen really started him very well, mm-hmm. and then I seen his head jerk up, and I thought, oh, what happened there? You know, did he lose a foot or what? But I was talking to Colton this morning, and he said Dalen said he hooked a knot, and then he he uh, he gets like, why did I do that? What's going on? It, his mind doesn't go on right, and it went, oh, I, I would think. Okay. And uh but remember, I said uh, as soon as it popped his head, yeah. that's when he got bucked off. And the power's going to go somewhere. So if he hook a knot and Dalen rides so free with his feet, he, he doesn't really want to do that. Some mm-hmm. people love to do it. But mm-hmm. uh, when that popped his head and the power went there, uh, he just got bucked off. And, it wasn't and when, for lack of effort. It just happens. Oh, absolutely. It looked great up to that point, and all of a sudden, right? You saw just a bit yeah. of the head pop, as you said, and that makes perfect sense now. Um, the So talk a little bit about what it means to hook the knot. Okay. Um, the knot is where you adjust your rope. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know with a Brazilian rope if you would hook it in the same spot. They got keepers that keep the rope straight, and they could have hooked that. Ah. But uh, the knot is how you adjust it, bigger or smaller. Mm-hmm. And if your spur gets in there, it uh, really pulls you towards pulls you down onto the bull. Yeah. That's why some guys like to do it. Yep. But it can also buck you off at times and can be very difficult on your groins because it, it pulls on your legs so hard so yeah. no give we don't want them hooking knots and it is illegal to do that in the shoot when you're leaving there have your knots when you leave there mm. um, you know, okay. i might have mentioned that on the rules yeah thing. now yeah. you can hook them out there because it's you're not trying or you, even if you are trying to do it it's not like you're guaranteed to get it so Okay, and that explains that. Uh, the number two bully got on, the second bully got on, which would be Saturday night. He got on Boomerang, another Blake Sharp bull. Talk through that ride just a little bit, Sam. Yeah, that, uh, I don't know. I can't really talk about it. <laughs> no, he, uh, Dalen just overrode the bull. He, he when Dalen's going 120 and the bull's going 100, he just left out of there and he got into the well right off the bat and that was it got bucked off yep yep and then sunday uh third round bull uh came back um on lap lapua i believe it's pronounced another blake sharp bull i don't know if it's lapua or la bucker that bull was outstanding <laughs> he was that bull really bucked and dalen had him riding and riding him and riding him. and i thought oh good but he just didn't keep up. That bull was really getting it, and mm-hmm. that wasn't for lack of effort. I'd have loved to see what that score would have been because he bet. was having fun. He was having fun, absolutely. And he looks good, and he, he looks strong. And I know you talked with him uh, after the performance. Feeling okay? Uh, yeah. He didn't say anything. Of course, okay. he never does. But right. Uh, right. looked like he was walking good, yeah. and yeah. you know, I didn't see any issues. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, a few more, a uh, few notables here. Uh, Brady Randolph from Johnstown, uh, Pennsylvania. He rode one bull in the second round, eighty-seven a quarter. Uh, he ended up fish, finishing fifteenth overall. Hometown cowboy Sam, you've known this cowboy for a while. Yeah, he uh, came up through the high school ranks. He he actually came up from Florida, and then. Uh, he started coming to some high school rodeos there. He might have been a senior or junior when he did that. And he uh, a lot of talent. The kid's got a lot of heart, a lot of try, uh, just a lot of talent. And 
I know his uncle and his grandfather rodeoed with both of them some, and you know, kids kids got effort. You bet. You and bet. On the winning Rattlers, Texas yeah. Rattlers rodeo team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, had a great team. team. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, and won the won the national championship there, the world championship teams. Um, and then uh, Eli Vassbinder was back, and we hadn't seen him since teams. Uh, he rode two. He had it clicked off. He rode one. He rode round one, I should say, and then round two. So he was on a roll, just had a new baby boy. Uh, 167 and a half points, finished third in the event. And originally an Ohio cowboy, now living in North Carolina. You know, I didn't see Eli in person to tell him congratulations. So if he's listened to this, congratulations to you and your lovely wife, Paige, mm -hmm. uh, on your baby boy. On the baby boy, uh, yeah. I'm sure he'll be following him around and warming his rope up next to dad. Absolutely, long. absolutely. And then another cowboy we follow, uh, Boudreaux Campbell. Um, he, um, he finished up eighth overall. He rode two. He got off on a run. He, he rode in the first round, uh, and, and successful in his second round and 173 and a half on, on two bulls. And Sam, he had a Sunday, unlike any other Sunday, he got on four bulls. If my count was right, cause he made back into the short round. But he had re rides in the in that uh, in that long go that final round number three. Yeah, he uh, it just seemed like every one he got on something happened, and and he got another one, and he got another one. So he was a busy man. If you had them all together, he made he won the event. But he didn't. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't work that he picked an outstanding bull in the short go, um, and. Didn't get it done. That bull was uh, was bucking bull of the year in the PRCA a year or two ago, and just really bucks. You Outstanding bet. bull. You bet. Outstanding bull. Um, and, and then and another. If I may, bull. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, if I may, uh, and Eli, he picked man hater in the short go. Right. And did that bull buck? Oh my goodness! Wow. Absolutely. He's got so much kick, it, it's it's almost scary. And he started really, really well on that bull. Yes. Mm -hmm. But just a so, ton of I power just wanted to say that, that, that you know, I had Manhater, and that bull was outstanding. Yeah, and for our listeners, I think Manhater right now is still number two in the bull standings uh, for the year in the PBR. Um, and then yeah, another cow. Two. What's that? Either one or two. Either one or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then another bull rider that I wanted to, to point to, um, your three-time champion, world champion, uh, Silvano Alves, uh, win, wins round one, wins round two, finishes ninth in the event with 173 points. I I was impressed with his riding this weekend. Yeah, Silvano drew very well to suit him, mm -hmm. and that's – that's good. You know, that's what you need. Mm -hmm. And he took advantage of it and rode very well. He's, he's kind of coming back like uh, a teenager. <laughs> well, he's I think having fun. he's having fun. And I, I'm going to say the teams had a lot to do with that. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt about it. He still will sit on him in the shoot till the last seconds up. <laughs> right. <laughs> do Part. that but uh yeah he, he teams does. have helped him immensely yep. regain his confidence in bull riding. you bet you bet absolutely so our pbr standings as of the end of uh the saint of uh, the johnstown notice how i slow way down johnstown <laughs> pennsylvania well, i want you to know you weren't the only one this weekend that said that <laughs> yeah wrong yeah and even had it wrong on the board. Did they really? They said they did Jonestown, for, for, did they? <laughs> for Brady Randolph, yeah. they had hometown Jonestown. Jonestown, yeah. So, all you... I got to do is say one thing, guys. Yeah. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> That's exactly right. 
That's exactly right. So our standings coming out of there, Cassio Diaz in first, uh, Cody Jesus in second, Caden Bunch, he won the he won the um, uh, the Arizona event, and then Sage uh, Steel Kimsey, he's in he's in fourth place, and he's at the NFR. We're going to bridge and talk about him a little bit. Um, and then upcoming rodeo, Sam, they are on uh, outside of uh, they finish up in Las Vegas this week. Uh, this next weekend, they begin or they continue, I should say, their Eastern tour, Manchester, New Hampshire on the 15th, 16th of December, Albany, New York, right after Christmas, the 29th and 30th, and then Madison Square Garden, January 5th through the 7th. So that's coming up. And... And don't forget, Sam, Louisville, April 26th, 27th. I believe you are coming to Louisville. We're going to go to that event, and we're going to be recording here in the BTC studios in Taylorsville, Kentucky. Yeah, that's the plan, Doug. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to Manha- Manchester, New Hampshire. I okay. put it together okay. with one word. Um, that's the plan for this weekend okay. and Albany. I'm planning on going there. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to go to Madison square gardens unless something but, changes, but Molly is. Yeah. Yes. My other daughter, she's booked a room and she's ready to go. <laughs> she can put you on the train. She can help you get around Sam. That'd be a new yeah, adventure she could. as opposed to driving all the way in. Maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. he told me you don't drive then, you know. You go <laughs> maybe drive down, get on a train down in eastern New York and take that in. And I know last time Carrie and I went there, we uh, spent as much to park the car as we did to <laughs> stay in the room. So Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, expensive, but but memorable, right? I mean, that's a that's a huge arena and a wonderful arena to be in, the Madison Square Garden. Yeah, it, it's phenomenal, and they sold it out the one Saturday night or Sunday when we were there, and you know, just incredible to see that kind of bull riding in New York City. Yep. Just yep. amazing. Yep. Perfect, perfect. And then a couple of weeks after you're in Louisville here with the PBR, the Unleash the Beast finals are going to be in Arlington, Texas on the 17th, 18th, and 19th of May. Um, they're going to be in the, in the AT&T Stadium. Uh, brand new. Have they they've been there? Has, has a PBR been in the AT&T Stadium before? Oh, yes. Oh, they have. Yes, okay. they have. Okay. Yeah. Huge event, huge venue, I should say, huge venue. Yes, it is. It's just amazing, amazing for this farm boy to see something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. All right, we're gonna we're gonna sw- switch gears here a little bit. We're gonna go see how our NFR Pro Fantasy Rodeo team is doing. Of course, the team name is a BTC podcast, and I gotta tell you, Sam, this has been fun. Um, what a way to engage in, in this event, you know, 10 days of rodeo out there, uh, and miss Gail Jones with pro fantasy rodeo, what a help she was. Um, I talked with her briefly this morning, Sam, and we are based on what I learned from her. We are on to the round four daily fantasy game. So there's a 10 day team you put together and then you can play every day. So if you didn't get your main team for the 10 put together rest assured you can get on there and they actually give you another hundred thousand dollars to spend so 550 to start on the big 10 day program 650 is it 650 or 600 sam 650 650 650 thousand so sam and i went through and put our team together that's only for today so you pay only for the round and it's cool because you sit back and look where everybody is um try to try to put your best uh best athletes forward and just a lot of fun um and of course uh miss gail jones married to kc jones nine times nfr qualifier in steer wrestling and you can find this game, this this program at uh, ProFantasyRodeo.com. And do what I do if you have any questions. Call 
6336 and you will get a hold of somebody and they will give you a big hand and uh it really really raised my confidence after i spoke with her sam yeah and it uh it was nice to get the should i say inside baseball fantasy uh yeah. to, to get to know what it the workings and what you have to do because there was a few questions we had and he answered them completely and told us how to how to set up our team and also told us well if you want to keep going for the million you got to have your header header and healer and the team open on the same team yeah yeah uh, yeah and it's like this one well we didn't split them did we no no one one day one we didn't split them and we could have, we talked about it, but we didn't do it. So, yep. yep. Um, so our BTC podcast, now this is a 10 day, this is a 10 day team, uh, slow start, Sam round one, we won $20,000 way off pace. I mean, we're, we're a third of where we needed to be on that first round, but Jess Pope, uh, we had purchased him. He's our guy in the bareback bronc riding. He wins 18,000 that first night and our bull rider Sage Kimsey wins 2,500 puts us in at about almost 21,000 for the day. Round two, we get a little bit busier, and again, Jess Pope, another eighteen three, another eighteen thousand three hundred dollars, and and our healer, because we didn't have the healer and the header teamed up, we went with it, different individuals. Uh, our healer Cole Curry wins twenty five hundred dollars, and then Tough Cooper Sam, value of the value of the value, meaning. We spent ten thousand dollars for this young man. He's won how many how many NFR averages and world championships and he won eighteen thousand three hundred dollars on the day. And then Lisa Lockhart, eighteen three as well for round two, which would have been Saturday night. So we gained a little bit of ground, still off pace, still off pace. We won fifty seven thousand for the day. Uh, through round two with, with uh, or that was round two results, I should say. And yes, yesterday, Sam, it got busy. Um, Jess Pope uh, won uh, $5,000, so he's still picking up checks. Will Loomis, the big man, steer wrestler, he won $1,700. And Cole Curry, our healer, he won eighteen thousand three hundred dollars, and then thank goodness for us that we had premium insurance, um, and and unfortunately Stetson Wright withdraw Sam with an injury. Have you heard anything? Of course, the all around champion. He was gunning for a million dollars this year. Uh, the uh, saddle bronc rider, bull rider. What do you hear, Sam? I haven't heard a thing. Okay, and. The boy has got grit, so he must really be hurting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he did something before he came in, because the end of the year, I thought he was sound. Yeah. So getting ready for it, he could have hurt himself, but uh, I have not heard a word what what's going on. And I did see him and his father walking out, and it was kind of a touching but yeah. sad sight, you know, to yeah. see. So. Yeah. And and because we had the insurance, then we dropped from number one, uh, Stetson Wright, as our as our rider, uh, because we'd bought the insurance, we were able to. It shifted to Sage Newman, and Sage Newman had a great evening, um, almost thirty one thousand dollars last night in the go round. Um, and then Tough Cooper comes again for another check. So two out of three checks he's picking up for a little over $10,000. Lisa Lockhart continues with a $30,700 win. So we had Sam round three came in at about $96,800 on the day. Beautiful. And that's what you want to win the truck and trailer. So. Um, you're going to want hundred thousand dollar days if you can get them. You bet. So, so where we right stand, there. go ahead. I said, we're right there. We're right there on that day. <laughs> um, and then on the, on the day or on the, I'm sorry, after three rounds and remember there's still seven more rounds to go. Uh, we have won a total of 175000 And don't forget, there's still the average that gets paid out at the end of the 10-day run. 
but pretty impressive. Our Jess Pope brought in almost $42,000. Um, Lisa Lockhart brought in $49,000. So, so far, really a good start to it. And every day you can kind of see where you rank. And that round, Sam, there was 7% of the teams that are out there that did better than we did. 7% is all. To be in the top 10 is pretty cool right now. Yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> that's great. Now, 45% of the teams are better than us on the running at or the running total at our 175,000. But uh boy, these rounds tally up quick if we can get uh, if we can get more repeats of round 3 like we just saw. Well, time will tell. That's time why will we tell. play the game. Yeah, time will tell. Yeah. Um, um, and then as far as my team versus your team, and of course we got BTC podcast. That was the two of us. But your Rawhide Rodeo has won one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars, and I'm a close second. Uh, my team that I put together, it's called Sage and Indy Dog Tired, um, is is a little over eighty-one thousand. So pretty pretty darn close, Sam. We're right in the hunt there, uh, coming after you. Yeah, but I still can't see you in the rearview mirror. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you're not quite twice. You're 165, we're 81. Per my math, you're not quite twice what we have in winning. Well, see, you being an accountant, you should add better than that. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm at uh, 81 twice is like... <laughs> 162 and I'm at 165. So I think, yeah. But I'm that. figuring I, average yeah. and, and averages oh, and yeah, I'm what, weighted. What was that they used to say uh, in the politics? What kind of math was that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well in, uh, <laughs> in the business world, they said figures never lie, but liars never figure. I think is how it goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll, All we'll right. see what we can do. And then in our BTC Daily Fantasy game, first time we played it, Sam and I, now this is a joint venture between he and I, we got together, and in our, on our team members, uh, Jess Pope, we've hung with him on all of our teams, excited excited to have him with us. Um, Tyler Wagespach, right? But we went a little bit different direction, Sam, with our team ropers, our headers, Andrew Ward, our healers, Buddy Hawkins. You were pressing for this. What's your thought process there? Well, I had them last year in my fantasy team, and mm -hmm. I don't know much about team roping, but they uh, won the average, and uh, they see they did good again last night, and I don't think they make mistakes, so why not give it a go? Absolutely. Yeah, so we're in, and it's just for today. And, you know, this is a good way to get good practice for when we do this again next year for the 10-day. This is just a cool way to have a little bit more information. We get to now see who's kind of riding the wave, who's who's picking up, who's going, because we can see the results from the first three rounds. Um, our bronc rider is Zeke Thurston. We stick with, we stuck with Tuff Cooper. I mean, he's the man right now in the tie down rope, as far as I'm concerned. Lisa Lockhart, we stayed with her, and of course, we stayed with Sage Kimsey. We're waiting for Sage Kimsey to pop it off and get this thing running. Yeah. Um, did you watch it last night, Doug? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get home till about 1 o'clock or 12 30 last night. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, uh, I, I watched it in the car. And then I watched it when I got home. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Didn't you drive home? Oh, well, of course I drive all the time. I'm the only person that will drive. But didn't you drive no. home? How were you watching TV in your car? Let's say I started driving and I got in the passenger seat. Oh, you I did? did okay. okay. And, and, and watched. Uh, okay. I watched the end of the football, Bills football game, and then I watched the rodeo. Okay. So, okay. I was not driving and watching. Okay. Okay. And okay. The, That's good. That's good. Um, and so, Sean was driving, and I okay. said, now, you can listen to it, but yes. you can't watch it. Yeah, you wouldn't even point so, it in his direction. You'd say, hey, let me see no. that run. You're like, no. 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 We're like, going to be safe. They, uh, I had to tell him about the play that – Kansas City Chiefs scored against the Bills. Okay. 
Okay. They uh, threw it down the field, then he threw it back to another guy, and the guy ran it in for a touchdown, oh, wow. and then it was offside. So You had to count. describe that whole play to him, that whole series? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. You've got Because I wouldn't good. show him. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't I'm show it. Absolutely. Two yeah. eyes on the road, right? Let's yeah. be safe. Raining and dark and miserable yeah. night to yeah. drive. Yep, yep, yep. So what did you see when you were watching? We were talking Sage Kimsey. Well, um, we talked earlier about instant replay and costing somebody, and it, it was a classic, classic case. If mm-hmm. there had been instant replay, he would have got a rewrite. Okay. Okay. And okay. He, I'm sure when he he tried to ride the bull, but it got half-heartedly because the bull went down, both back legs tangled up and went down and almost went to his hip. Mm-hmm. And if a bull or a horse stumbles, it's a re-ride. Yep, yep, yep. And yep. I, I, I have no idea. This, this could cost him immensely it could cost me my truck and trailer yeah, yeah. you know i'm yeah. a fantasy thing because the judges missed it did, didn't see it uh, yeah. yeah so we'll leave it at that okay but okay. instant replay would have uh they couldn't have ignored it i don't think you bet you and, bet uh, you bet so Anyway, yeah, it is what it is. It uh, is what life. it is until they get yeah. instant replay. Now, speaking of instant replay, we are going to go to the IPRA, uh, the International Finals Rodeo, Sam. And you notice my segue here because they have got instant replay. They're able to, if, if in a situation like that, the rider raises his hand and says, go look at this. I know the bull stumbled and went down to his hip. Yeah, and all they have to do is slip or get tangled in the back end. They don't have to go down to their hip. But, they, right, um, right. But that bull did, you say, drop, drop pretty oh, deep. Yeah, <laughs> he did. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and they had instant. They're going to have it at the IFR. Thank yeah. goodness. Yeah, because these yeah. guys go hard, and yeah. they deserve a fair shake, and that would would help them. Yep. And they had it up at the Canadian final, six go rounds, and I think there was only three people that challenged it oh wow okay. so it's not like you're yeah taking time up and you know and i don't care anyway because the people are in the stands they're there to have a good time yep just like yep. the pbr does it every week and uses it as an act yep like oh look at this let's yep. see yep. Oh, let's check this angle you bet. and you know they build the crowd up and they start booing or cheering yeah. and <laughs> you know yeah. it, it, it's just what you want at a rodeo crowd. Exactly. Partip- partip- yeah, you know what I'm Participate. To say. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there sure. you go. <laughs> Get to be part of this. Oh, yeah. No, that was very apparent. And as the re-ride official, he was down there looking at it. Yeah, you could hear the crowd. There were lots of murmurs. And, and there was one guy that I heard uh, oh. <laughs> gave his opinion very clearly, Sam. It, that wasn't a murmur. <laughs> no, that wasn't a murmur. <laughs> that was, was a huge. <laughs> he had a big <laughs> voice. Was... You could hear yeah. him through that whole arena. He had his On opinion. On the other side, we were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One word, that's yeah. all he said, right? Or maybe yeah. it's a combination of two words. I forget what it is. Yeah, it had something to do with, with bulls. Something. With yeah. bulls, right? With bulls. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, so speaking of the IFR, International Finals Rodeo, Sam and I are going to be traveling down there. BTC is going to be on the road. We've already talked about that. Uh, Lazy Arena, Lazy E Arena. Guthrie, Oklahoma, on January 11th through the 14th, half a million dollars, double what they rode for last year, Sam. I'm excited about this. And I saw Old Timers Day is going to be on Friday. So hopefully we get to see a bunch of the uh, prior champions and, and uh, great rodeo greats. Um, uh, hopefully we'll get, get to meet some. Yeah, that should be a, should be a blast, uh, knowing a lot of the contestants and a lot of the members from days gone by yeah that uh will be there to talk it, it it should be a lot of fun and 
I'm so looking forward to it. Absolutely. And we've got our list. We've talked about that before. Folks, we want to get on the show. And I think what we're going to be doing is a pre-show, post-show for every day, Sam. We're going to be, we're going to get the day sheets, right? So we'll have an idea who's getting on what. We can do, uh, hopefully, just a quick maybe half hour. Here's what's coming. Here's what happened the day before. So we're, we're going to try to keep everybody informed best we can. And we'll try to get those, those up really, really quickly. And then the weekend before, um, big money at the Lazy E still, the Guthrie, Oklahoma arena there, World Champions Rodeo Alliance, the WCRA, January 3rd through the 6th, $400,000 are going to be competing for. You and I aren't going down, but this ought to be a huge event again, Sam. Yeah, that, that should be a, a great event. You know, the, the, this sets up one of the things to – go for a million dollars you have to win three of these events in a row yep and if you do that they give you a million dollars and who wouldn't want to try for that absolutely it's and a, it's a it's a real deal yeah. sam it has happened already the million dollars was handed out to rc landingham in fort worth texas last was it last fall, late in the fall, I believe, after he won three of these big WCRA events? In a row. In a row. In yeah. a row. Mm -hmm. You bet. You bet. Outstanding concept, you know. Yep. Why anybody that is as talented as some of these contestants wouldn't go here and do this. And and it is growing, I'm sure, yep. every, every event. Uh, more people sign on for it and sign on for you it. Bet. So it, it's just great. And and speaking of that, Dan again, we had her on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and that episode is going to be coming out tomorrow. Uh, she spoke about the great turnout and the great great performance by the IPRA Cowboys and Cowgirls when it was in the uh, WCRA in the Carolinas, Sam. So I'm excited uh, uh, for this for this uh, event coming into Guthrie. Um, we probably should have planned ahead, and we could have spent two weeks down in Guthrie pretty easy, Sam. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, but is what it is. We will <laughs> know better next time. Well, yeah. we can still. Do you want me to book flights and rooms and, and that sort of thing, or uh, who knows, right? No, I'm no. good. You're We're, good? Yeah. <laughs> Enough going if for a while? Want. Yeah, no, I'm I'm always up for going, especially if it's good weather. Yeah, yeah um, that's true too. That's true but too. Uh, no, it it'll be uh, it'll be interesting, and I may go there if Colton's going there. I forgot to ask him this oh, morning. Yeah, he's been going to all these oh, wow. events. He's oh wow, he he's been in almost all of them that I that I know of. And uh, why wouldn't you? You, you bet. Know, why wouldn't you? And Dalen's gone to a couple and done very well, but with uh, PBR, it's hard to get away to them. So you've named quite a few of the team members of the Rawhide Rodeo team that you had put together over the years. You spoke with Eli Hirschberger the other day, and uh, since his injury and everything that happened at the, what was it, Mid-States Rodeo Finals, um, what do you have to say, and are we going to see him at the IFR? Well, first off, let's get to the most important thing. Is, yeah. uh, he forgot to call me on my birthday. So uh, oh. thank you, Eli. I appreciate that. Oh, my. You know. Oh but, my. Uh, you know. Are you uh, going to be able to work nothing. through this, Sam? I mean, this is a serious uh, I deal. might need therapy. Okay. Need therapy. Okay. Well. But uh, anyway, yeah, um, yeah Eli is going to, he said he's ready to go. He feels pretty good after getting kicked in the face. Man. Um, yeah. He, he said uh, he He's driving truck again. Okay. But he said he tried to shoot some horses and that kind of hurt a little bit. But okay. I said, well, you got a month. You can sure heal up yeah. in a month's time. And you he, bet. he thinks he'll be ready to go. Okay. And, uh, well, th that'll be neat to see him there and let's, you know, keep him on the healing path, right? Be smart as we get there. Or yes. to get there, I should say. Let's be smart to, to stay healthy until we get there. Uh, and then Raymond Hotstetler, another of your Rawhide Rodeo team members. Uh, first Frontier Circuits in uh, at the finals, I should say, in Harrisburg, PA. That same weekend, I think that's the 12th through the 14th in the Farm Show Arena down there. Uh, have you talked with him here of late? And what's, what's he up to? 
Not of late. Um, it's time to get a hold of him and see if there's anything he needs before he goes. You know, and he's got it all under control. But uh, he uh, sometimes a little push in the right de- direction. Let him know that how he is so much able to win this event, run it away. Yep. yep. It, yep. It, it is his. It is his to lose because he rides so good. He he yeah. just rides phenomenal. And just keeps his head about himself and uh, does what he knows how to do and gets on the right stock and he'll be off to the races. You bet. And keep us informed. I know he's looking for another saddle and I'm just curious, you know, how that process comes together for him. Yeah, I don't know if he's ordered one. I told him I had uh, one here that fit him very well from a Mm -hmm. good friend Mm -hmm. of mine. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mike Allison, I did rodeos with him, just good family man, good person, and he rode that, and then he said it wasn't, I don't, I don't really remember, at first he loved it, and I think he said it's sliding back on the horses somewhat, so okay. he, he's he's looking for another one, and uh, it, if it If it's in your mind, if you're not comfortable, change it. Because your mind, even though nothing's wrong, can work on you. So people out there, make sure your head's right and it feels good. You bet. You and bet. then go win. And then and then go win. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. And then finally, we can't end the show. I know you've mentioned him two or three times already. But Colton, how is he? Where is he? What's he got going? Well, uh, Colton's in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Hasn't been going anywhere okay. uh, much, but to the practice pen. And praise the Lord, he said he's getting up and working out every morning. Nice. And nice. I couldn't be happier because if he puts on 20 pounds of muscle, mm-hmm. and I said, no, not just muscle. you got to work on the reflexes. And, you know, he's like, yeah, 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 dad, you know, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of ignored me. Yeah. But yeah. Reflexes are so important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. In any event. Yeah. And he, uh, if he puts on 20 pounds of muscle, he'll be a force to be reckoned with. You bet. And, you bet. You know, it, it's just, he's got all the tools. Yeah. And then if he just sharpens the tool, he'll be a force. You bet. You bet. No, that's excellent. Well, I'm, I'm hoping he competes, and I'm hoping you can get down to the uh, WCR event down there in Lazy E. Keep us informed. Uh, let us know uh, if he's going to be there. I will. I forgot to ask him this morning. We were talking about the horses he's riding and things like that for us. So a little and, update uh, on the horses. What uh, What's going on there? Um, he's still got three of them. He sold a couple. Oh, he and, did? Good. Uh, Good. Yeah. And things are going well. He said there's one that's ready. It's a little young. It just, I think he's just like, two and a half or be three in April. And he said, he's just really, really, he, he doesn't want to push him, but what a nice horse. Okay. And, uh, have a mare that's really good bred, maybe a granddaughter to dash to fame. And oh, wow. he said, he said, I don't know. She, she just like, she, she gets hurt just a little bit. And I said, must be a barrel horse. Cause any barrel horses that I've been around, that get mixed and scraped. Not okay. hurt bad, but okay. just just does things that yeah. are frustrating that you gotta <laughs> yeah. watch out for. So yeah. are any of these standing out for him? He goes, you know, that might be a good one to hang on to and not not sell or what's uh what's he thinking there? I, I think he would really like the young gelding, mm-hmm. the one that's two and a half. But oh, okay. I think he's just too young to push yet, so he's doesn't he's not ready. You know, it, Colton needs something that's ready to go now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that horse is going to take two or three years to oh, get okay. it seasoned and where he wants to be. But he says you can do anything on this horse. He's, oh, wow. And he's he's basically barrel racing bred. Really? Okay. Uh, well, both. I think he's got cow horse on the top and uh, mm-hmm. that uh, – or Flint's fire water or something like that on the bottom. I don't know much okay. about it, but okay. uh, 
Well, again, keep us up. We're we're really curious about these horses. And so he's down to just two then, Sam, of, of the bunch that you bought? He's got two there, yep. yes. Yep. And uh, Carrie has another one that's... Uh, okay. She she seemed to like, and he's kept him down, her down there at Dalen. So okay, okay, yeah. okay, excellent. And I have one here that uh, we haven't done much with yet. Might you take that down take, there? Is that what you're thinking? I probably will. Yeah. Well, thanks for telling me that, Doug. I should use my head a little bit <laughs> there when I go. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. If you're headed down, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So is there anything we haven't talked about, anybody we've forgotten about, or have we hit it all? I think we've done well, yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm a little anxious to see how this fantasy does tonight with the each go-round. If we do well, we can go every night. And you know what, the, Sam? The only problem with that yeah, yeah. Uh, is that's on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast. And, you know, usually I sit down in my chair and by 8 o'clock I'm half asleep and 9 o'clock I'm done. And now right. that's when it comes on. So yeah. it, it might do me good. To, it'll keep me enthused to watch it so I stay up, I guess. Well, can't you record it on your VCR, Sam? Oh, you, I probably could. You still have VCR, if right? Had, if I had a VCR here. Oh, you, you don't know, have uh, a VCR. Oh. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I figured you did. I figured you did. You, no. you would think so. But, uh. <laughs> well, again, th Sam, thank you so much for a great week up there. It was so enjoyable. The the, the PBR at the end, I mean, it just was a, an outstanding week, and I really appreciate your hospitality and, uh, and uh, being part of this whole deal. Well, Doug, it was a pleasure, you know, the, the, what we did with the – podcast was good but uh you coming up and uh talking and just being a friend and seeing old friends come in and chat you it bet. was it was interesting you bet more to come my friend more to come okay all right we hope that you enjoyed our conversation about the johnstown pbr the pro fantasy rodeo nfr team and our upcoming events, the IFR, the WCRA, and our Round 4 Daily Fantasy Game. If you do, please share it with, with your friends. And to make your listening easier, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Search for Beyond the Shoots and follow us. You can also listen on our website. You need to just find beyondtheshoots.show, S-H-O-W, and check out the Pro Fantasy Rodeo Facebook page and follow them. And we'd like to say thank you to Parasite Systems for their support with our podcast. They also have a Facebook page you can check out, Parasite System. And Parasite System is a push-button parasitic diagnostic system for pasture animals, horses, cattle, goats, sheep, chickens, and for companion animals, your dogs and your cats. You can find them at ParasiteSystems.com, that's P-A-R-A-S-I-G-H-T, Systems.com. And we have a coupon, BTC023, for 50% off your test kits. And this is Beyond the Shoots with... Sam Swearingen. Until next time, this is Doug Simcox. Thank you for listening.